smoking causes cancer. Dear colleague, I have translated your work and communicated it to Zeitschrift für Physik for publication. It signifies an important step forward and I liked it very much. In fact, I find your objections against my work not wholly correct. For Wayne's displacement law does not assume the wave undulation theory and Bohr's correspondence principle is not at all applicable. However, this does not matter. You are the first to derive the factor quantum theoretically, even though because of the polarization factor too, not wholly rigorously. It is a beautiful step forward. With friendly greetings, yours, Albert Einstein. Professor Shuttindranath Bose is one of the legendary physicists of the 20th century, immortalized not only by coinages like Bose statistics, Bose-Einstein condensation and Higgs boson, but half of the fundamental particles are named after him, bosons. He is indeed a renaissance man, a patriot and a polyglot. Twenty two Ishore Mill Lane, North Calcutta. My childhood home. I was born here on the first of January, eighteen ninety four, to my parents, Amudini and Shurendranath Bosch. My father's great grandfather, Durga Chorun, had built this house in eighteen seventeen. I was the eldest child and the only son in a family of six daughters. My family called me by the nickname Bodhi. Ours was a joint family, an ordinary middle-class Bengali family. Normal school, indeed, that was the name of my first school, on the upper Chitpur road, where I heard Rubindranath Thakur also studied. I was enrolled here at the age of five. It took a long walk going to the normal school, so my parents transferred me to a school in the vicinity, the new Indian school near my residence. I studied here till 1906. I was admitted to the famous Hindu school in my final year. But just two days before the examination, I was down with chicken pox. I missed the exam. I had to appear for it the following year. Shottendranath decided to study science. At that time, Presidency College had brilliant teachers. The faculty were studded with stars like Prabhullo Chandra Rai and Jagadish Chandra Bose. Here he met his friends Meghnath Shah, Nikhil Ranjan Sen, Gyan Chandra Ghosh and others. I had the good fortune of learning chemistry from Acharya Prabhullo Chandra in the first year itself. But it was only after two years that I had the opportunity to study under Jagadish Chandra. I shall never forget those days. Most memorable were the times when he talked about electrical waves with demonstrations using his own instruments. After completing my BSc, I joined the mixed mathematics class. Since I was more inclined towards theoretical science. Shuttendranath topped 
in the ISC, BSc and MSc examinations. In fact, his marks in MSc examination is still a record. At the age of 20, while he was still a student of MSc, Shottin married Ushabala, daughter of Dr. Jogindranath Ghosh. One day, Meghnad, Shoilen and I were summoned by Sir Ashutosh. We promised Sir Ashutosh that we would equip ourselves with the latest developments in modern physics. Apart from Sir Ashutosh's huge library, which we could use freely, we also gained access to the excellent library of Dr. P.J. Brohul, the versatile teacher of Shippur Engineering College. Bose's first paper, written jointly with Shah, came out in 1918 in the Philosophical magazine. His next two papers were based on pure mathematical problems. They were published in the Bulletin of the Calcutta Mathematical Society. His 1920 paper on the deduction of Rydberg's law from the quantum theory of spectral emission in Philosophical magazine attracted the attention of appreciative physicists. His collaborative work with Shaha to translate Einstein's theory of relativity had a historic foreword by Prushanto Chandro Mohulanobish. It was a joint work of three stalwarts of Indian science. The book was published by the University of Calcutta in 1920. In 1921, Mr. Hartog, the first Vice-Chancellor of the University of Dhaka, called me up in Calcutta. I was offered a readership at Dhaka. During the course of lectures on thermodynamics to the MSc students, Bose uh, found that uh, there was uh, a problem in the derivation of the Planck's black body radiation law. And uh, classical physics actually fails to explain the experimental results of black body radiation. And several workers, including Einstein himself, attempted to rederive this formula using only quantum concepts. However, none succeeded. Now it was at this juncture that Bose finally managed to crack the problem and give a completely quantum theoretic derivation of the black body radiation law. He used three things in his derivation. The fact that light was a quanta it could also be used or interpreted as a particle, a concept that was in fashion at that time. And hence, you see, he, he, he coins this term, the light quantum. Again, on 15th of June 1924, he sent the second paper to Einstein. The next where Boltzmann distribution shows how particles are distributed as a function of energy. So there is a broad distribution and the lower the energy is, the higher is the probability to find particles. Now, when the gas is cooled down, everything shifts to lower energy because lower temperature implies lower energy, and then the distribution gets shifted and looks approximately like this. But this is just the rescaling of the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. There is nothing really dramatic. The dramatic change came when Einstein applied Bose's concept to that situation. So let me plot again the number of particles versus energy. 
and at high temperature, Einstein obtained the result of Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution, which I discussed earlier. But now, when the gas is cooled down, there is again a shift towards lower energy, and the distribution gets a little bit sharper, but I can't draw it so accurately to show that. However, when you now cool to a little bit lower temperature, there is a phase transition, there is a sudden change where the distribution suddenly has this huge spike. This huge spike is a macroscopic population of particles in the lowest energy state, which in a gas is the state of zero velocity. So this spike here is called the Bose-Einstein condensate, and this was the dramatic consequence of the concept of indistinguishability which Bose introduced into physics. So in 1995, we observed Bose-Einstein condensation by cooling an atomic gas down to temperatures of one microkelvin or below. So we had reached absolute zero to within a millionth of a degree. And when we, we then measured the velocity distribution of the gas, we observed the following. What you see here is the broad distribution I explained earlier, the thermal distribution of a normal gas. But when we lowered the temperature, suddenly there was this sharp spike. This is the Bose-Einstein condensate. These are the atoms which are at rest, which are all in one quantum state. In India, the first Bose-Einstein condensate in optical traps was achieved by Professor C. S. Unnikrishnan and his team at the Fundamental Interactions Laboratory of Tata Institute of Fundamental Research in 2007 by using magnetic fields and lasers to cool atoms to an extremely low temperature just above minus 273.15 degrees Celsius or nearly absolute zero. Dhaka University granted two years study leave for SN Bose to spend in Europe with an advance fund of Rs 13,800. Bose sailed from Bombay on 1st October 1924 on board a steamer of the Lloyd Tristine line and reached Paris on 18th of October. In Paris, Bose put up at 17 Rue du Sommerhag a building which housed the Indian Students' Association. Bose's main interest seems to have been to visit the modern laboratories of Europe, particularly specializing in radioactivity and X-ray crystallography. Dear Mr. Hartog, received your kind letter of the last mail. I am at present working at the X-ray laboratory of Maurice de Broy. Madame Curie also has given me hopes of allowing me facilities for work in the Radium Institute from the beginning of the next year. After spending one year in France in the company of luminaries of modern physics, Bose left for Berlin. He spent his time in Germany studying, attending seminars, colloquia, and meeting people like Fritz Haber, Otto Hahn, Lise Meitner, Walter Botha, Hans Geiger, Peter Debai, Max von Laue, Wolfgang Pauli, Werner Heisenberg, and others. Berlin was then the center of learning that attracted scientists from all over the world. While in Germany, Bose visited Einstein frequently and talked about many subjects besides physics. It was in the idyllic atmosphere of Dhaka that Bose's versatile genius began to blossom. He did not confine himself to the subject of his own specialization, mathematical physics, but encouraged his colleagues and students to undertake new ideas, both in theory and in experiment. The X-ray laboratory of Dhaka soon became one of the finest of its kind in India. Right from his return to Dhaka, he had started guiding students in chemistry 
and published papers in chemistry. Bornali Bikon Jate study Kora Jai, Shejonotini, Onegulo, Spectrometer Jontro, Tujikurich. Baruti Bibagni, Takavishila Jatra Shurkurichilo, Tamade, Kodak Tibikan Ekti. Shevitjuhi Bibage, Shutten Bosch, Kolkata Tike, Tini Polito, Golit Shastre, Master's degree Korea, Shakavishila Jodan Kola, Reader Shari. আমরা অত্যন্ত গর্বিত যে ঢাকা বিশ্ববিদ্যালয় এখনো যেখানে আমরা পরিচিত হই সকলেই বলেন সত্যেন বসের বিশ্ববিদ্যালয় তার মৃত্যুর পর ঢাকা বিশ্ববিদ্যালয়ের সিন্ডিকেট সিদ্ধান্ত নেন যে অধ্যাপক বোসের নামে একটি সেন্টার তারা স্থাপন করবেন তখন থেকে যাত্রা শুরু হয় এই সত্যেন্দ্রনাথ বোস অ্যাডভান্স স্টাডি ইন রিসার্চ ইন ন্যাচারাল সায়েন্সেস হি ওয়াজ প্রভোস্ট অফ দ্য ঢাকা হল হি হ্যাড টু প্রিসাইড ওভার অল কালচারাল এন্ড अदर ইভেন্টস অফ দ্য হল বাট ইন 1945 হি রিজাইনড ফ্রম ঢাকা ইউনিভার্সিটি এন্ড জয়েন্ড ক্যালকাটা ইউনিভার্সিটি অ্যাজ কয়রা প্রফেসর অফ ফিজিক্স The faculty and the students of the University College of Science and Technology, Calcutta, were delighted to have Bose back into the fold. Bose continued his experimental investigations in crystallography and radiation physics with a group of very young workers. Soon, the Khoira Laboratory was developed into a well-equipped center for crystal structure analysis. These were busy years for Bose. He became president of the Indian Physical Society from 1945 to 1948. He was the president of the National Institute of Sciences from 1948 to 1950 and was also nominated a member of the Rajya Sabha from 3rd April 1952 to 2nd April 1954 by the president of India. In 1954, he was honored with the title of Padma Bibhushan. He became the president of the Asiatic Society in 1959. During the period 1953 to 1955, he published five papers in quick succession related to Einstein's unified field theory. Einstein was very keen to construct a theory which would be one theory for everything. Today it's called TOE, theory of everything. Now Einstein's theory, this unified theory, had a system of 64 equations all coupled to each other and it was very very difficult to solve. So Schrodinger made a comment in his book that it seems that no exact solution of these equations is possible. But Professor Bose did work on it and in the next few months he came up with the exact solutions. And then he wrote several papers on this. But Einstein wrote back saying, okay, you've done this work. You have, it, it, it's obvious you have, you have worked so hard with such penetration. These are Einstein's words. Uh, but unfortunately, the solutions show that what I was expecting for from these equations will not happen. In 1953, Bose was invited to attend the World Congress for General Disarmament and Peace at Budapest. Invitations came from Soviet Russia, Denmark and Czechoslovakia. On his way, he also visited Geneva, Paris, Copenhagen, Zurich and Prague. He met Professor Pauli in Zurich and Niels Bohr in Copenhagen. The following year, Bose attended the International Crystallography Conference in Paris as a representative from India. He went to England in 1956 to attend the annual meeting of the British Association for the Advancement of Science. Two years later, he went again to attend the Royal Society meeting where he was elected a fellow. 
In 1962, he went to Sweden and from there to Moscow to attend the Peace Conference. In August 1962, he was invited to Japan to attend a seminar on science and philosophy organized to commemorate the atomic explosion over Hiroshima and Nagasaki. On 1st of July 1956, Bose became the Vice Chancellor of Vishwabharati. So Shatin Bose believed in Tagore's vision at Shantiniketan. Uh, Pandit Nehru, uh, while addressing, he mentioned that to develop science and to uh, encourage scientific temper in the university for the students, you have the best eminent scientist of the country or of the world, which is none but Professor Shatin Bose. Professor Shatin Bose lived in Abhaghar near Shambhati and his office was in Shantinitan House. At that time, that was the only available infrastructure that we have at Vishwabharati. Vishwabharati awarded him Deshikottam in 1961. Tagore, in his last part of his life, he started reading and writing on science. And he wrote a book, Vishwa Parichai. He had a lot of interaction with Shatin Bose. We see a lot of correspondence of his letters, and he interacted with him even in scientific matters. So he dedicated his book on science, the Vishwa Parichai, to Shatin Bose in 1937. On 18 December 1958, he wrote to the Chancellor and asked to be relieved from his duties as the Vice-Chancellor of Vishwabharati. In 1959, Bose was appointed National Professor. Bose shifted his office and laboratory to the Indian Association for the Cultivation of Science. He began to work over a wider field. One such project was the extraction of helium from the hot springs of Bokreshwar, first detected by Professor Shamadash Chatterjee of Jadavpur. However, it was through the efforts of S.N. Bose that a field study unit was set up at the site. I always strongly advocated the study of science in one's own mother tongue. I believed this way many more youngsters from a wider social spectrum would be attracted towards science. My dream was partially realized when with this very objective to promote and popularize science through Bengali, I could establish the Bungyo Bigyan Purishad in 1948. The Purishad organized conferences and seminars and arranged exhibitions and lectures rather successfully. And most importantly, published articles and books on science. The Purishad's monthly magazine Gano began, became quite popular as well. I am the youngest of my father's uh, children, and uh, I was 33 when my father passed away. He was a versatile genius. From the very young age, from when I was a little boy and all that, all this luminaries in Bengali literature like Dhujyoti Prakash, Dhujyoti Prashad Mukhopadhyay, Mukherjee says, and say, Vishnu De, say, Onnada Shankar Rai, say, 
uh, Harith Krishna Dev, you might not know, he's a musician, also a historian. Harith Krishna Dev, Shunite Kama Chattopadhyay, and painting from Jamini Rai, Otul Bosch, and music cycle. Prabhu Shankar came to stay in Shantiniketan to our house. And musicians used to come and play for us in Ishwar Milan and Bahadur Khan when I was there. He played in our house. And whether you know it or not, my father was a founder member of Jhankar. He played a Sraj, but he never learned from any Guruji or music teacher. But by listening, people play music. He used to play himself Esraj. And perhaps you'll be glad to know, or maybe surprised to know, that he even uh, made ragas by himself. In 1957, three universities, Calcutta, Jadavpur, and Allahabad, conferred on him the degree of honorary DSC. In 1958, Bose became a fellow of the Royal Society. In 1961, Bisho Bharati conferred upon him the title of Desi Kottama. He was awarded honorary DSC by Indian Statistical Institute in 1962 and by Delhi University in 1964. He received Vigyan Bhaskaram from Sanskrit College, Calcutta in 1964, DLIT from Rubindra Bharati University in 1970. The Shuktindranath Bose National Centre for Basic Sciences was established by the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India on 13th of June 1986. This creation is a fitting tribute to the father of bosons. The area of research include theoretical sciences, astrophysics and cosmology, condensed matter physics and material science, including nanomaterials and the chemical, biological and macromolecular sciences. The center has on campus a large guest house and hostels, conference and seminar halls, laboratories, a library with state-of-the-art information support, as well as most competent aids to promote computational research. The center has strong symbiosis in teaching and research. The residential doctoral research program produces young PhD awardees. Half of the fundamental particles of the universe are named after him called motions. The significance of his work can be gauged by the fact that several Nobel Prizes have been awarded to the researcher worked on his ideas in diverse applications of physics. In 2001, I received the Nobel Prize in Physics for the experimental realization and studies of Bose-Einstein condensates. January 1st is the birthday of Satyendra Nath Bose. Professor Bose has a special place in my life. My own research in physics is based on the discovery of Professor Bose. What was important about Bose's work was not so much that he rederived the Planck radiation law. What was much more important was the fact that he introduced the concept of indistinguishability into physics. When particles are indistinguishable, they are no longer independent. And this is a big new idea. This idea shaped the development of quantum mechanics. He died in 1974. But his ideas and his name will live forever in the textbooks of physics. Jake Chena Munerikti Joy Manobik Bodo Bhikota Hashchut Chushimon 
সর্বদিকে ব্যাপ্তি শিল্পে সাহিত্যে বিজ্ঞানে সঙ্গীতে অথচ নিত্য জীবন সম্ভোগে এমনকি জর্দা পানে ধূমপানেও কিংবা ধূমপান ছেড়ে Thank you.